Your music um, seemed to have turned right over when uh, Neil joined the band. Norman died. <laughs> <laughs> You've been asked that one before, haven't you? <laughs> um, all your lyrics are sort of mystic and that kind of thing. What's on your reading list? Oh, I try to cover a lot of different things with reading. I read a little bit of science fiction, a little bit of fantasy, and uh, yeah. a lot, a lot of English literature. Beano, Bunter, Incredible Bulk, Incredible Bulk. A lot of stuff. Some serious and not some not serious. Just keep the head active. And Alex and I can't read. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't read, but and you never seem to write. Um, how come you guys don't contribute more songs lyrically? Well, you know, uh, we don't talk so good. Like, uh, uh, talk for your, t yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I usually pull a tune out every couple of albums, but that's that's about it. This guy does it, and you, you're welcome to it. <laughs> Alex and I prefer to spend more time on music. That's, that's what moves us. So it comes down to a lot of times when we're working on writing, we'll split up, and the two of them will go together and work on music while I work on lyrics. It's just a matter of facility, really. I have a facility with words that I don't have with notes, and they have it with notes. It's a good balance. Three, Three guys sort of been living in each other's pockets for 10 years, and uh, these guys go off while you write the lyrics. Do you ever get paranoid? <laughs> no. We just put together ideas when we're on part like that, and then everything we do really comes down to a unanimous decision. And with the recording thing, it's with Terry Brown, it's a four-way unanimous decision. Unanimous. <laughs> And if all of us aren't excited about it, then we'll stop and re-examine <laughs> it and possibly throw the idea away and start again. You know? Everybody has to be excited about it or it's not going to happen. Have you thought of doing what's... What kinds of exciting music? Um, you, you know, you were the band that really proved that you could get out there without radio airplay. You could actually just do it by getting out there and playing for people. You think that's still possible for a young band now? Well, we were told it was impossible when we did it, so yeah. if it's impossible now, then I would say, do it. <laughs> really what it comes, it comes down to is not compromising, and if you don't give up, then you just keep going. But I do tend to get very enthusiastic, and actually enthusiastic is a word I much prefer. It literally means infected by the gods. A lot of my obsessions actually grew up around a reaction to touring and the tedium of it. Reading had um, fascinated me since grade school, really, and I can always remember going to the library on every Tuesday after school and get, getting a new load of books and all that. But um, I never really applied any of that into writing at that time because at age 13 I started drum lessons and that became the all-consuming obsession. All other interests went by the board, schoolwork went down the drain, there was only drums. And then when I started touring in the 70s with the band, I immediately found it extremely tedious because we would have maybe a 20 minute set and the rest of the time was basically just sitting around waiting or you know sitting on airplanes or whatever. So I turned to reading at that time, rediscovered it in my early 20s. So I started reading frantically, but kind of methodically, trying to gather all kinds of fiction, trying to fill in the gaps in my um, education, and a lot of nonfiction from history, philosophy, geography, natural science. And out of the, the cloistered kind of travel that a rock tour is, I became interested in adventure travel. And also I started carrying a bicycle on the road with me, and on days off I would go out riding in the countryside. So that got me curious about adventure travel, and that played back into writing. I would guess around 85 I went to China on a bicycle trip, my first adventure travel. And some, something came together at that time because I decided I'm not taking a camera, I'm going to try to capture this journey in words. So after that China trip I wrote the first of um, a journal of the of the uh, my experiences on it. I traveled then to East Africa after that, and uh, toured around the animal, uh, the national parks, and the wildlife, and uh, climbed Mount Kilimanjaro and wrote that one up. Probably about six books that I published privately, just small editions for friends and all that. Till 20 years later, uh, in 1996, published my first book, which was about cycling in West Africa, and uh, gathered the experiences ma mainly of a trip around the country of Cameroon and into war-torn Chad at the time. One nice comment that a few friends have made, I'm really glad you made that trip so I don't have to. But that, that's where my taste for travel, which I have always loved since childhood, and then adventure travel took it up a notch, and then writing came into it, that's what I wanted to write about. So after uh, The Mast Rider, then I had certain reverses in life that uh, led to the next book, which is about a motorcycle journey around um, North America from the Arctic to Central America, Central America and Belize. 55,000 miles of motorcycling and reflection that uh, led me into a, a new kind of life. 
And then my one kind of true, a musical autobiography, I call it, traveling music. I was uh, driving from LA to Big Bend National Park in Texas and listening to music along the way and thinking about what I wanted to write next. And as I drove, I'm thinking, well, this is a story, the music that I'm listening to, why I chose to listen to it, what it represents to me and my past and my life. And I decided to weave that into, it's really a long song form, this book of verses, choruses and, and bridges and so on. And then I'd always wanted to capture touring life and talk about adventure travel and talk about the, a deep experience that I really wished I could share with people and have tried various ways in songs and in prose over the years. And finally, I decided to fully document a tour, which was Russia's 30th anniversary tour. Rocha was a, a, a concert tour by motorcycle, which I thought was a, a, or a landscape with drums, which I thought was another interesting play on the common title. But after that, uh, I had the same sort of uh, crisis about what do I want to write about now, uh, having captured so much. And then I thought, well, I'll just take a break and write short pieces. So that I found after about uh, three or four years, suddenly I had a book's worth of stories. And that became the next volume. This was the special limited edition with the drummer's bass drum crest on the front. And it became a book uh, far and away that included stories that ranged so far from not just motorcycle travels and not just drumming stories, but um, cross-country skiing up in Quebec and snowshoeing up in Quebec. They're all my adventures, let's face it, musical adventures, um, touring adventures. They're, they're all something that I wish to share with others.
anyone is probably escape. And I grew up in a very suburban environment, uh, very conformist, and, and consequently seemed very bland to me and very difficult to break out of. And reading was, reading was the exit, definitely, for me, the escape. And started very young uh, with mystery stories, you know, the romance of all that. Um, oh, even Nancy Drew and Hardy Boy books and Agatha Christie. I read a every Agatha Christie mystery, I think, ever. Caught my, my imagination, his way of looking at something caught my imagination. So that became my starting off point. Um, other writers specifically, I, sometimes a song like Losing It was written about a writer. I was thinking of the tragedy of Ernest Hemingway when he got toward the end of his life and he just simply couldn't write anymore. And it had been his life and, and he'd be standing there for... He was invited, I remember, to the uh, President, Kennedy's, President, President Kennedy's inauguration and there was a story that he stood there for two hours trying to write an, an answer to this invitation and couldn't compose an answer to the invitation and, and was weeping, you know, with the frustration of it all. So I got into the tragedy of that and then thinking about him as an individual, but then taking it as a symbol and thinking of any artist or any person who does something they really love to do. So again, I don't think that's important. The important thing is that they are affected by the music, and if they like it, that's fine. They'd never pay any attention to the lyrics except the sounds. And, and I have to think of that, too. When I'm writing lyrics, there are sounds that have to be sung, and I think of them just in a purely uh, euphonious way. It just has to be a nice-sounding series of syllables. And then if I can get uh, an interrelation of rhythm in there that satisfies me as a craftsman, and if I can get some other symbolism in there that might be even just personal, that will just make me happier with it. So nothing's lost, you know, nobody suffers. But when somebody takes that vagueness and all that big collection of images and possible interpretations and takes it in such a, a diametrically opposed way to anything I'd ever even thought of, let alone intended, uh, it's a little scary, but you have, to, you have to say, well, that's good, you know.
Well, yeah. you can taste them all there. <laughs> but you would, uh, that's the only variation I've ever heard of, really. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. One more tea. Oh, oh not so good. Uma Thurman. Didn't yeah. you used to be married to her? No, that was <laughs> Buffy Saint Marie. <laughs> no, but I, I was married to Uma Thurman for three weeks after <laughs> Buffy Saint Marie. We split up because of Uma Thurman. <laughs> what did you used to call her? Um? Uma Thurmus. <laughs> no, but what did you call her for short? Like oo or oom? I called her. <laughs> <laughs> Just nope. be so typical to call her Oom or Before I done Uma or Uwe. She was a lot of fun. She was a good sport. But just didn't work out after a couple of weeks. She had a watch. She had a watch. She had a watch. Not a watch. She used to drive me crazy. <laughs> I hate fucking watches. How do you know what time it is? I don't care about the time. Ooh. Unless it's going you know, backwards. You didn't feel that way when you wrote that song called Time. <laughs> where the lyrics were time blinds my eyes with light. <laughs> yes. He had a watch then. Ba-noom. He had a watch then. Pow. I, I might have written those lyrics, but I never actually wrote them down. <laughs> yes, you did. I have them. I, prove it. <laughs> Not you can't me. prove it. On I can't now. You don't I carry can't. them with you? <laughs> he he will. I will taste. The smart guy with the this, lyrics. This is 1972. <laughs> no, it's not lyrics. It's evidence. <laughs> Thank you. Proof. What's this 1972 we're talking about? Vomit. I know. After a year and a <laughs> half. <laughs> How about this? How about Lurks comes over to my house and we start jamming around and try writing some songs. Is this some kind of crazy story you're telling? Do that both. Lyrically and drumistically, yes. and touring wise, I've got a whole mindset ready for that. I think making an album is the thing to do. I think making an album is the end goal, but yeah. I think if we start by writing some songs, and if something changes in the way everybody's feeling, we can shift gears. But there's no downside to starting to write songs. No. That's the way I look at it. Of course, it's going to be fresh, whatever. Let's go and do the tour that we did last year. That's not going to happen. Obviously, we do songs is, is the best. No. I mean, we could do almost anything. That's exactly it. Because there are almost no practical considerations anymore. No. But speaking from my own personal needs creatively, I think I need to write something. I need okay. to be involved in something uh, hmm. substantially creative. And I sense from my good friend here over there <laughs> that he needs the same thing. <laughs> I've got some great ideas. <laughs> and I'm speaking from the heart. Oh, yes. And the good thing about writing is that we can change our minds halfway through mm. and do something else. Yeah. Without anything lost, right? I, mean, I have a question. <laughs> Only if you don't try to pull that earwig out of your ear. <laughs> I know I can't. Why don't we write some songs <laughs> right want? now? Let's start. I got a notepad here. It's in this box. These are oh, writing. You're gonna write some lyrics. I can write things down. Right can now? you write some lyrics? Right now. Well, that's why I brought the drum. This is a man ready for work. <laughs> okay, here. I, oh, Jimmy Hendrix. Wait a minute. You want lighter? You gotta light <laughs> that thing on fire. Don't right? put anything in your mouth. Okay. Honestly, come on, come on. I paid good go. money for that thing. Why are we doing? Oh. You make me feel I'm so silly. Such sweet. an idiot. <laughs> oh, thank you, Dirk. I was dying to hear that. At all the night. same time, oh, I. Lord. At the same time, you said that. I said, "You make me feel so sane." I'm going home a saner man. Thanks. You don't know where that guitar has been. <laughs> yeah. I don't care. <laughs> he doesn't care. Have you you could have H one N six T six nine. You're trying to kill me. You're yeah. So writing songs, you say? I think we should write songs. How we many? Should, we could actually. You know, I don't know. I was just thinking. Just some. Minute, when? Like right now? Where? What I thought was that what lurks in the He not do a weird. He actually <laughs> says my name and then runs deeper into his house. I'm gonna die again. Oh, That's God. not true. You got my driver's license. <laughs> 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 See? Don't kill crap. See? See it's what he not can good do? for business. <laughs> Think of the children. <laughs> well. He's crying now. We made him cry. Oh, no. 
I just peed my pants. <laughs> you have your bag, though, right? Yes, sir. I think done. we've been successful in destroying these people's film. I will remind them Stop. that I said you would regret it. You said I just that? wanted to say that. I said, don't be surprised when you discover how boring we really are. Cut. <laughs>